Hey YouTube, what's up? Scarecrow here. Today I am going to do a deck profile on my updated uh, Luard build. Um, now that set 14 is out. Uh, this deck has changed a lot. Uh, the way I have my deck built after doing a lot of play testing is absolutely nowhere near where I thought it was going to be. Um, so, it, yeah. So this build uh, is kind of like, I guess you might call it like a rush build. It runs only, uh, I only run five grade threes. Um, and like, the deck is just mil meant to be like have a good early game and be very consistent in uh, drawing cards and building up to your uh, later game once you start striding and stuff. So, uh, it gets, it's what I found to be the best build so far. Um, most consistent. Uh, getting started for starting Vanguard, I am running uh, this guy. Um, when he's ret at Ritual 3, um, there's some very specific things about him. You gotta be at Ritual 3, and when he's retired for the cost of a card with Ritual, uh, you can move him to the soul and counter charge. So he gets you a soul and unflips the damage. The unflipping, both things being important. This deck is very very soul blast heavy, very counter blast heavy. So he's a good refund on your costs. Um, the ritual three part and the being retired by ritual is uh, very tricky parts to him. You got to use him carefully because of those uh, spe specific uh, restrictions. But he's running pretty good. For triggers, I am running uh, two of him and. Four ravens for six stands, uh, four owls, and then two other crits for six crit, and lastly, four heals. Uh, um, pretty standard. There's no reason to explain that. Uh, I like six and six. Uh, I don't like playing only four crit. Um, I feel like when you only played like the four, it really takes a lot of fear out of the opponent, out of your drive checks. Um, so that's why I'm playing 6 crit. Um, Ravens, uh, this card is like a staple in Luard. Um, you should just be playing it, it's just too good not to. Um, and then last for this guy, I like playing 6 stands. Stands are actually like really good in this deck now. They come up really well in your Drag Abyss turn and stuff, getting multiple attacks off. As well as like, this card is a very good effect. Um, being that he counts as two retires, and when you sack it, it goes back to the deck. He's best used, utilized for um, him and Raven. Both of the reasons that these cards are good, other than the fact that they're stands in a deck that has like big power attacks, is that they do really well on your drag strider turns. Um, this card giving you food to retire and filtering the deck. This card. Uh, if you're low on resources, you can use your on tread skill, call this card out, it'll count as two retires for the drag strider skill, and go back to the deck. Um, yeah. So, grade zeros out of the way, into the grade ones. Uh, we got two uh, Dragon Lancers. She is kind of like your ritual focused. Um, uh, Swordbreaker. Um, Ritual 1, which is obviously easy, and she has the same skill as Swordbreaker. Um, the uh, downside is you need a Ritual Vanguard, so it's a little more restricted. You can't like use it with like um, Orgeyser Doomed, but you can use her uh, when you're going to Dragabus, which in this deck is usually your first stride. Um, so She's still good in that sense. Uh, usually you're just going to be striding Dragobus anyways, and then you'll be using her to get a draw. Um, yeah. I'm running her at 2 just in case I damage 1 um, or have to ride it so I can still have her. She's good to call off your of initial stride to build up your ritual, get a card in hand. Um, I'm playing... Uh, one of her, um, she, I don't use her a lot, <laughs> but, uh, she combos well with the drag, uh, 
Lancer Grade 2. Uh, Drag Fencer Dagda. Dagda, that's his name. Because um, you could uh, swing with Dagda, uh, retire someone, call her, use her skill, retire someone, call two. So, uh, in theory, she seems really good. I haven't got to use her a whole lot, so I can't tell you how consistently good she is. But in theory, she sounds like really good. Might take her out. Not sure. Uh, I'm playing One Knees. Uh, previously, I haven't been a big fan of this card in the past. But I like it a lot in this build. Um, with the way Whiptail and stuff buffs him. Uh, with his skill on top of it, it's like a plus five. And then he works really good in the sense that you can team him up with another uh, grade one. And hit like a good number, sack that card, draw, then swing with your uh, Dagda, sacrifice knees. So you got to sacrifice both cards so that when you swing at the Lancer and he calls two, you're not calling them over top of cards, you're calling them empty spots. So yeah. Uh, for Esra, uh, <laughs> that seems self explanatory. Might be like one of the best. If not the best, definitely the top five PGs in the game. Uh, this card is really expensive right now, but it's really good. Uh, I'm still playing for Abyssal Owl. Um, you could cut back on this card, uh, I won't lie. You can probably find room to cut down on it. Um, the counter charge skill of it is not as important as it used to be. It's still, like really good and helpful to have access to but it's not as important as it used to be um mostly i haven't cut him down any yet because uh i have a fear of not being able to draw my grade threes especially in this kind of build so he helps me get there um you could get away with less but i'm playing four just because i want to make sure i can get there and then the last grade one spot go to like the new mvp grade one i would say um Fraubnock, I think is how you say your name. This card is super good, especially for a common. Uh, early game, you can use her like rest like your starter and discard her and draw. Um, and then late game, at Ritual 5, she has a plus 7, so she's a 14 and has res uh, resist. The resist is really nice. It really messes with certain matchups. Like a Nubatama, they'll want to drop their G-Guard and then move her to Guard Circle, but they can't because she has resist. And the fact that she gets plus 7 is so good. You can team her up with another grade 1. And that 14 column gets bust by 7 and now it's 21. Um, she's a really good card. Really good. And she helps with the deck early game, as I said. Um, ditching her, drawing a card. Get you to your grade 3s and stuff. Uh, get the drop zone ready for when you ride to grade 3 to have ritual. Really good card. Uh, for grade twos, uh, playing for Ganon. Uh, this card is really good um, early game. You drop them, counter blast, discard a grade one with ritual, which is like everything, and then draw two. So early game, you get to commit some fields so that you can actually have some early game presence, but you don't lose any card advantage in your hand. Um, he nets you a plus one, so by calling him plusing one, it's like your hand size didn't change. And he fueled your drop zone with more grade one, so he's good. Um, in fact, I'm play also playing one knee main. Because uh, so, she basically has the same skill. She's not as good of a card because she's only a 3k. But I'm basically, it's like I'm running five of the same card. Um, some people like to actually run two of her and play six. I'm only running uh, the one because I don't feel the need to really go that hard on it. But it's really good. Um, for next, I'm playing four Whiptail. This new guy, he's actually pretty cool. Uh, and you have a grade four Luard, which is basically if you are on a grade four. Um, he In the deck and drop, he's a grade one. And his other skill is when a grade 1 gets called, he buffs himself and that card. Uh, if you use this guy correctly, uh, like if he's already out there and you call like two guys, he can give himself plus 6 and each guy plus 3. If you got like multiples of them out, call one card. A whole bunch of buffs. Uh, he's actually super cool. 
Um, he w combos very well with like Dagda, and he's a good card just in general. Basically, uh, he pl replaced Morfessa. I don't think there's a reason for you to bother playing Morfessa anymore. She's she's just okay now. She's not that great. Um, this guy just is better than her. Uh, and then last of the grade two spots, I'm playing three Dagda. Um, this card is really good once you get to your stride mode. Uh, he gets you out multiple attacks and deck thins and makes buffs. Um, he's a good card. Uh, you should definitely play him, I think. Really good. Uh, for the grade threes, I am playing four Dragfall and one, uh, Dragheart. Um, obviously, Dragheart... Uh, Dragfall being the superior one. This is just a backup. Uh, I wanted to, some people play four. I play five just to make sure I can actually get to one eat more consistently. Um, so yeah. But the idea of this deck come with your uh, grade twos that give you early game presence is you can build up to your ritual like really fast and then get to your ride um, on Dragfall and just be able to stride using his effect. Because you have all the Drow power and the uh, Abyssal Owls still, you can still pretty easily get to your grade threes, even though you only play like five. Um, for the G Zone, uh, I'm playing four Dragabus. This card is I underestimated this card. It turned out to be better than I thought it was. Um, his on his uh, skill to build a board, pop some things, is pretty okay. Um, it helps you just build your board the way you want, kill a thing. That's kind of mediocre. It's just like a little bonus. What makes this card actually good is once you get to Ritual Three, and for every four cards, uh, four grade ones that drop, your front row gets plus ten. Uh, usually by like second stride when this is active and you go into it, you should have like a route. 8 grade 1's in the drop, so your front row is going to be like plus 20 that turn. Uh, he's That's crazy big. Your field is huge when you go into this guy. And then you're doing like multi attacks with like Dagda and getting stand triggers. and It's crazy strong. This card's actually really good. Uh, next, one uh, Drag Strider. Uh, I used to run two. Uh, the deck is far less dependent on it. Like, my old build used to be just focused on the Drag Strider turn to make him attack for, like, ridiculous numbers where they can't guard. Um, not doing that as much anymore. I actually don't stride him that often anymore, usually. On Drag Abyss ends it. Um, but he's still there because there's still, like, he's still a good card. You can still, like, do him pretty reasonably. Some situations he'll be the perfect card. But, yeah. Uh, I'm also playing one Orgeyser and one Doomed. Uh, so, so basically, it's like I'm running Doomed. Um, just I kind of like still having access to him. Uh, sometimes he actually is kind of a better first drive. Um, sometimes after I've used both my Dragabus, uh, the other strides are kind of awkward to use, so I'd rather go into him. So I think he's still worth running. Um, kind of. He's not f as good as he used to be, but still kind of good. Uh, this next part, uh, I think a lot of people would probably argue, but I have my reasons I'll explain. I am running, uh, for Phantom Blaster Diablo. Now, I'm sh a lot of people, I'm sure, don't like that, but to be honest, uh, Dragabus is pretty much the only stride I really use anymore. Um, sometimes I use the other ones, and so that gives me room in my G zone to have like more utility. And this deck's like one of this deck's worst matchups is Chaos, and Phantom Blaster here is one of the best strides to use against Chaos. Um, if they it makes them like have to keep a f decent field out, otherwise you can they won't be able to guard. Uh, so it makes them play differently than they might otherwise do. And, um, I mean, that's if the Chaos player gives you enough room to sacrifice guys. And, uh, in the sense, like, if they leave you two open spots, 
uh, just two spots. That's enough. You could stride, uh, call out the stand, and you'll be able to swing, sack the stand, the other guy, and then they wouldn't be able to guard. Um, and even if they don't, at least he can come out and be a 36k crit. Um, like, if you can just keep pushing big, strong attacks, even if it's just your vanguard, sometimes that's enough against Chaos. So, this guy gives you at least somewhat of a fighting chance against Chaos, and it being such a bad matchup, that's why I would play it. Uh, next, uh, Ultima. I shouldn't have to explain why you should play Ultima. This card is just too good, especially in this deck where you... Dragfall just lets you ultimate stride. You don't have to have the grade 3 and you, you can just do it with him. Uh, this card is good. This card will win you a lot of games. Um, I would say this card probably wins me like one third of the, my matches. So, very, very good card. Uh, and lastly, uh, one, I should note, I'm not playing Sea Breeze. Uh, I really want to. I almost never make a G uh, break base deck where I don't play um, Seabreeze. This deck with the grade twos that I'm running though and the way it plays, it's very counterblast heavy early game. So it's hard to have room uh, to counterblast two for the Seabreeze. And I just needed room for more utility in my grade four. So right now I'm not playing it. I might really regret that later, but that's how it is at the moment. So. Uh, but under the G-Guards, uh, Run Bronach, uh, this card is not, like, used every game, but she can be, like, she actually gets used probably 50% of the games, and she's not, like, the best G-Guard, but she can be, like, pretty cool, like, if you only have to guard 15, uh, or 20, you can pretty, you can just drop her, block the attack, dump some grade ones, uh, Seems like every time I ever use her, she ends up dop dumping uh, uh, Estras in the drop zone for me. So that's cool. It gives me access to them. Um, if your opponent got the stride first and you can guard with her, you can set up Ritual really fast. Uh, so yeah, she's pretty good. Um, I'm also playing one Dark Veil Dragon. Uh, I actually don't use this card a lot. It's kind of hard to sometimes because he's got a Soul Blast. Uh, if you plan on using him, you're going to have to prepare yourself to keep soul. However, that said, I feel like he's worth running just because he's such a big shield buffing for every uh, great other two, I think it is. Every two great ones in the drop zone, he gets plus five. So he can be a massive shield against some decks. Like if you're going up against like Messiahs where they guard restrict you, being able to drop a giant G guard is like essential to like get through that match. So... I run just the one of them, just for in case. Um, I'm only playing two plot makers now because I had to make room somewhere, um, so I had to cut one. Didn't really want to, but I felt I needed to have uh, the dark veil. Um, so usually two plot makers is fine, anyways. But yeah, that covers uh, the deck profile. Thank you for watching.